What's up, everybody? Damon here, joined by Sam. Hey, everyone. And today we're looking at one of the first issues of Electronic Gaming Monthly. We thought it was the first, but then uh, if you flip to the back of the, of the issue here, it says, you know, strap yourself for the upcoming third issue. So yeah. it's either the first or the third. They have an important letter section, second. whatever the case, which is yeah. better than the, the Nintendo Power we previously did on Let's Read, which had it was the first issue of Nintendo Power, yet it had a totally fake letter <laughs> section right. in it because it was the first issue of Nintendo Power. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so as you can see, Mega Man 2 is a, a big game here. This is the big 1989 preview issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is their, you know, showcasing all the big games that are coming out this yeah, year. Yeah, and what what I think what you're gonna get out of this, just the same thing that I did, was most interesting thing is that uh, there's a bunch of unreleased games in here that never came out. It's yeah. really cool. I think right off the bat, it's kind of funny to point out that this is full of ads, and Nintendo Power is a giant ad. Right. We all know Nintendo Power. You might not have known uh, EGM so well back then, but. This just has a bunch of cool ads in it, and I remember this ad from like Boys Life magazine or something sure. too. These are un, you know these are unlicensed Tengen NES games, and that Tetris game is very valuable now. Yeah, so the yeah, I think what, one of the things you notice first off, compared to the Nintendo Power, is just the layout of this magazine is not anywhere near as good. No, <laughs> right? Like look at this. And we made fun of the layout of Nintendo Power, but I also think it's awesome. Oh yeah, I thought but it was. This great. is just like white space and crappy lines. Like I don't even. Yeah. I don't think it looks they like have. They use Print Shop from a Commodore. To I don't think they have any in-house artists like to create art for them. No, right? Except for that guy who did the Press Start logo. Yeah, on colored pencil. <laughs> um. Anyway, we we'll go back here towards the beginning. Yeah, I, I thought it was kind of interesting that this, unlike Nintendo Power, was divided up more into. Uh, like previews and features and reviews. Like there's no reviews in Nintendo Power. Like that wasn't a concept. But these guys kind of pioneered, you know, covering video games. Starts right off with top ten games. That, no, no explanation of how they came up with. Yeah, I I should do list. some top tens sometimes. Just, it seems like that'd be popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we based should on think this. about doing top ten <laughs> at some point. Uh, this next wave section. I guess these, you know these are upcoming games. Mm -hmm. Look at that Super Sprint. That looks like a really nice port. It, it's not nearly as good looking as that in the end. <laughs> the explosion looks Yeah, and we had talked about Vindicators actually in our last mm -hmm. Let's Read. That did come out, but Vindicators is cool because it has this like awesome 3D angle on the action in the NAS. They just made it this crappy top down game. Strider's a big game. Yeah, these are all arcade ports. Like, what a weird year to be porting all this stuff. Well, to. they've got, I mean, these are all Sega Master System games. Yep. So it's just interesting, you know, to see that at the time. You know, game magazines were covering Master System games, you know, right alongside NES but games. But you know that nobody was playing those yeah, games. Yeah, I know. There was one kid. One kid in every school. This is an ad. Sorry, kid, if you're listening. <laughs> well, it was, great. it was the Greg Miller and Levi Buchanan's of the world. Seriously? Yeah. Both of them? They were Master System guys. Wow, yeah. that explains so much. <laughs> so I like this ad. This is for the hotline for, you know, FCI's games. Mm -hmm. It's open from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Central Time. <laughs> like, how busy... Prime gaming hours. How busy was the call center? How many employees did they have? Were they just sitting there was it with the phone ringing off the hook? Or were they just sitting around <laughs> for hours and hours and nobody was calling? Yeah, I want to know. We'll, we'll have to track someone down. Uh, clearly, somebody that works for the FCI phone counseling line is listening to this episode, right? Yeah. So please well, let obviously. us know what it was like. We'll interview on our next... Let, let's read. Uh, this, is the, this is the type of joystick I see on the shelves of thrift stores all the time. It's weird. It's like they're they're showcasing these joysticks from this company, Bishu, and then they're like, for more information, contact. Yeah. Or just go there. I know. And for more information, <laughs> well, just just have your parents drive you to Bishu. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah, well, that's pre-internet for you. This is my favorite page. This one? Yeah. This is because this I've thing. seen one of these on Craigslist in San Francisco Bay Area. It's a it's a the, machine that comes with a TV that you put your NES in and it just kind yeah, of so like the NES is right here. You can access yeah. it and put in your games and then you feel like you're playing in the arcades. Yeah, yeah, and you feel like that because as it describes in here, like the game is at face level. <laughs> you know, like you can't you couldn't set that up anyway else. And then I'm sure that's some kind of like you know stock part joystick such setup, which is kind of awesome because it's wired in yeah. the NES. But yeah, well, I've they, seen these. These these made it into production and they're really funny. They sell these. They sell something like this in like in Sky Mall. It's oh, like and, temporarily. And it, yeah, but it comes no like you can buy it now and it comes loaded with like thirty uh, classic arcade games. Oh yeah, yeah. And, yeah but yeah, they're like fifteen hundred dollars. I wonder yeah, how much this one costs. Silly. Yeah. It's just like a computer monitor and a hard drive. You know, yeah. that's nothing. That's even less though. I love the 
Showcase on NARC. Yep. How that was a controversial game at the time. Yeah. Uh, it ends with Nancy would be proud, referring to Nancy Reagan's "Say No to Drugs" program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this was like this is like this big anti-drug game, but but it, it but included it really everything gory. else parents hate about games. Yeah, it was extremely. It was like violent. really sexist. It was really violent. It's kind of boring, <laughs> and it's just yeah. It was the "Say No to Drugs" craze. I don't know if you guys remember this, but. Every arcade game in 1989 had a, a say no to winner say no to drugs yeah. in the front of it. Yeah. For some reason, car, our, why were our arcades combating drug use? I don't know. I'm sure it was to uh, placate parents who thought that video games were bad influence on their kids. Yeah, I guess right. so. And I don't know why they were showcasing Cinemaware. Like, one of the hottest software companies around. Really? Cinema, Nobody's ever heard of Cinemaware. Cinemaware was? This is, no. this is the Three Stooges. Yeah, that's an amazing game, by the way. Is that the it's, good a, one? It's a, no, it's terrible, <laughs> but it's really worth playing. It's just a series of crappy mini games, and it's just like just off the wall nuts. It's a nice I, airbrush. Yeah, design. Great action. action, challenge, depth, <laughs> and then it shows the depth on the next out. page. I like I've never played that game. It looks fun. I like games I never with depth. That one yet. You like that one? Well, I like more, games I with like depth. Games with action in them. Yeah, I'm so. more of a depth guy. <laughs> this is this floating skull looking at him. Yeah. Well, Some you know, planet sort of something. It's deep. Oh, I think it looks like he's holding like a key, uh, a keytar, right? Like he's like he's yeah. in a band. Yeah, he's I, remember, like, I remember seeing that game like on the rental shelf in the drugstore. You know, you know, I'm being like, I'm not gonna play this game. <laughs> it's so crappy. But again, ads you never see those in yeah. Nintendo Power. And they have their letter section. You know, mm-hmm. nothing too. No, I like this. There. Look how janky the giveaway is. It's like at the last minute, like let's photocopy this and throw it in. <laughs> no color. It's like these funny like typefaces that just look like a. It looks like a. It looks like a summer camp flyer. Yeah. So great. <laughs> why? Yeah. Why it's is great. Why That's is Nintendo's what, layout so much way. better than Nintendo Power's than EGM? Oof, I don't know. It took a while for EGM to get yeah. busy. So here's a uh, a preview of hard driving at the arcades, and on the on the exact opposite page is an ad for the game, yeah for hard yeah, driving. It's so amazing. I didn't put that together. Yeah. Or is this actually an? Oh no, it's not an advertorial. That's legitimate content in yeah. EGM. Wow, I loved this game though. By the way, hard driving. So if you're gonna leave comments on uh, this, this you can leave them like, "Oh, I'm sure the big har- Atari money paid for this <laughs> feature." <laughs> it's true, yeah, because it really did. Yeah, for if, sure. If magazines had comments, I loved this game in the arcades. I've never seen, I've never seen that like shortened version of this. Yeah, like, I thought it seemed short. I thought I had like, maybe they just back. took the back off it for the photo. It looks cool. That's a really early like. He's driving down the road game. here can, in this arcade yeah. cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> He's hard driving down the road. Yeah, he is. So there's interesting stuff here in, in gaming gossip. Yeah, I read something really amazing in here. Yeah, okay, so on his, the Konix um, Oh, yeah, slipstream. a European company. Yeah, the Slipstream was the 16-bit system they were working on? Yeah, that, that did not come out. But that was I a company that, that was working on a you know a Genesis like system, and it just was an unreal system. Here's what's cool about that system: it was the first game system to ever have force feedback, like it, it rumbled when you shook mm-hmm. it when you played it, and the controller for it was this big panel with a steering wheel on it. That's what it came with. Like it didn't come with game pads; it came with like a big interactive mm-hmm. panel. Here, latest licensing coups: those shriveled up singers who plagiarized Marvin Gaye to gain fame and fortune. The California mm-hmm. Raisins will soon be the star of a new Capcom video. And game. Raisins is misspelled there. Uh, Raisins, <laughs> yeah, the California Raisins were, you know, all the rage at the time, pushing books and raisins on people. And uh, the, this issue mentions the California Raisins game several times. And uh, I think Frank Cifaldi got this on the Lost Levels a while ago. But I've played a ROM of, of California Raisins. It's like a Capcom Mega Man inspired game. I love up here um, with raisins. Look out for the abyss! The new James Cameron movie. He's the guy behind Aliens and the Terminator. Yeah. Depicts a battle between aliens and a crashed crashed starship in the U.S. Navy. Nope, that's not what that <laughs> no, movie is. No, that's not the plot. Look for plenty of talk. bullets to be flying when the movie hits screens next summer. <laughs> nope. <laughs> What are you talking about? That's great. <laughs> Although I will say, at this time, James Cameron had made three pretty awesome movies. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Those are all pretty good. He, he used to be. He used to be awesome. Even yeah. True Lies after the Abyss. Yeah, good. True Lies. Is good too. And then up here, this is about the Tengen uh, controversy with Nintendo. That's awesome that they're covering that yeah. in real time. Tengen filed a thirty million dollar antitrust suit against Nintendo. I did. I did mm-hmm. That was a lot of money at that time. They also mentioned hard driving here. Yeah, uh, and, and they call hard, hard, hard driver. driver. They Dude, it, it was wrong. just here. It was in their <laughs> magazine. <laughs> it's on the. <laughs> I just think this, the copy in this magazine must have like, had to have been ready. Yeah, way. I bet we know the people that did it, and it's still Quarterman, by the yeah, way, yeah, yeah. which was the the name they used for like Rumor Intel until the very last issues of uh, of EGM. <laughs> and I also point out that uh, Hard Driving did 
start getting ported to the NES, and it's just a ridiculously amazing, like, eight-second loop of, like, a car going in a 3D loop on the NES. That's as far as they got. But they did that. They made a 3D car game on, on NES, uh, like, one-hundredth of it. So here's the, their big, you know, 89 preview. The lamest preview section I've ever seen. It has, like, some screenshots, yeah. some information. So here's Strider, Rampage, games. 1943, Othello. Yeah. Which one is this? I can't which one that is. Uh, maybe like Kid Nicky or something. Predator over here. Yep. Uh, we'll have to see in the previous Tiger section. Shark maybe. Basically I, Mega Man, just on this page, like I remember seeing this in other it, magazines too. It just looks so much better it than everything else. Better, just, yeah. And then there's a, t- uh, what is that called? Touch Aerobics? Yeah. Dance Aerobics. Is that what it was? That was That's an awesome one of the game. pad games? The yeah, game I'll bring that in and we can play that. Okay, good. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> here we go, here we go. So they have it separated by company. Mm-hmm. And then in the beginning, it's kind of a mess because like, the screenshots don't have captions. They don't seem to like. Oh, the one on the bottom up. is not a screenshot. I know, that's just. I don't error. think. <laughs> but then, like several pages in, okay, they're like, okay, now we'll now we'll start adding captions to the yeah. screens. Look how they're cropped too. It's like that one. The, the one on the bottom, the platoon is like barely <laughs> cropped right. The others have like the TV bend in them. You just some guy with yeah. a photo. Yeah. Foot, or a like, do they just set up like a? A camera on a tripod, like, pointing at the TV? Like, that's yeah. how else would they do it at the time, right? So, these are all the lame companies, but as soon as we get to Capcom, I swear there's some good games. I like the Robocop description. Officer Murphy, who wants to wipe away the filth and crime in New Delta City. Now, the movie's set in, in Detroit. Detroit. Yeah. So, for the game, they couldn't, they they couldn't, couldn't license Detroit? Detroit. <laughs> right. Detroit was like, no, you can't, you can't give Detroit a bad no, name in right, this, this game. <laughs> Acclaim. Maybe. I like the release dates in here. A lot of times you can't see release dates for games at the time. There was like a chip shortage at the time, yeah, yeah, so like yeah. games were never in stores anyway. Taito, mm-hmm. they lasted a long time, but I yeah, don't think those are, are they technically still around? Uh, I don't, I don't think they so. are. Jalico, yeah, one. Jalico had crappy games. Kix is a good port on NES. I think Capcom's the I never played that. Konami Ultra. So Konami made a fake company called Ultra to publish yeah. more NES games, right? Because Nintendo uh, put a limit. They there was yeah, a, it was like four a year. Yeah, or something you could only publish. Make. It was it was a good way to. Like, that was a Yamauchi thing, like to make good games. Like yeah, you have to make to, four good make games. Shovelware, right? People yeah. couldn't just flood the market with shovelware. Yeah, totally. And look, they this is the first mention of Metal Gear here, which is pretty cool. Yeah. But it, it's already been out on the NES, and then they they ported it to the C64 and that and the Amiga. That's supposed to be a really good game. On the Amiga, and I still have never played it, but I've always heard it's great. Mm. The, I don't like the NES game too much. Here we go, California Raisins, another mention. So this is their co- this is their cover story. Right. Mega Man Two, this screenshot. screenshot, and then this blurb. Yep. And oh, I, that is the cover story. Then. That, but that's because that, that is mean, the box art, the cover, right? and this is the '89 preview. But this is I didn't all put they that had together. To, this is now. all they have to say about it. Well, it was <laughs> out of all these games, it did end up being the coolest game and the most important game they talked about in the entire issue. So, That's true. California you know, Raisins. Good work on the cover story. A graphically exciting game. This is funny. And the more Disney games, there's yep. a game in here called uh, Well, Ducktales is cool in there, but it says Adventures in Disneyland. Hmm. That never came out. Uh, well, that did come out, but it's called Adventures in the Magic Kingdom. So that's just a different name for that. Other possibilities um, are the Japanese import Donald Duck. I don't think that ever came nope, out. Nope, that didn't happen. And then I like it. It says, these games will also be targeted at younger market, comma, girls, <laughs> and family play. Oh, and so speaking of uh, other markets, they've got Taboo up here. Mm-hmm. Did you ever play that? I did play the it. The fortune-telling game? It says, Taboo should be that a welcome no alternative sense. for mom and dad and others oh, who have problems getting turn. through the first level of Double Dragon. Yes. Even idiots. getting the first piece of the for, Triforce For itself. girls, comma, idiots. <laughs> and they... they mentioned Mindscape here, but they didn't break out any of the games that they have coming, even though they had 720 Degrees, yeah. Roadrunner. And there was a letter about 720 Degrees, I don't know if you saw that in the yeah, letter yeah, section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When is it coming? They didn't mm-hmm. know. They didn't know. Yeah. That's a terrible port. Which one is Mystery Quest? I don't remember that one. Uh, I don't even see it on this page, so we'll never know. It says SNK was the first third-party producer of NES games. Because I, I think I at launch they were there with, the, well, are they the ones that did there was um, nobody at launch, Karate Champ? The Black or is that Data East? I, I can never know. remember. I'll have to look that up. That's plan- Nintendo games planned for release in 1989. Look at the From accessories. From Nintendo, there were just two, and I don't even remember Pinbot. Well, and obviously Cobra Triangle and Pinbot are not Nintendo games. Didn't Rare do Cobra Triangle? Am I, am I wrong about that one? It was Ultra, I think, or something. Mm-hmm. I mean, and Pinbot is you know a Williams game. Our, uh, pinball machine yeah. that got ported. Um, if you look in the bottom there, there's uh, from CSG ImageSoft. Um, there's Super Dodgeball, which is great. Super Rescue, I don't know what that is. And Super Pinball Sushi never came out. But we just saw a, uh, a really cool screenshot of Super Pinball Sushi, yeah. which was about driving cars and pinball, not sushi. I just love, this is not true. Nintendo had to put out games in 1989. I think that, yeah. Didn't I, Super I, Mario Bros. 2 come out then? Or is that 88? 
Uh, two is in it. Yeah, yeah. They had That's games in '89. Obviously, Pun- Mike Tyson's Punch Out came out in 1989. You know, That's so weird. maybe that was '82. But anyway, they just yeah, didn't know. Games. EGM had no idea. 16-bit Sizzler. This, so yeah. Well, see, this is a preview of 16-bit games. I don't. What is that on the bottom there? Is this that is the, the box, box art, art that's like must be the Japanese box art? Yeah, for uh, Ultra Beast. That's awesome. Yeah, it is actually really. It cool. still doesn't show you what 16-bit graphics look like. Nope, which is kind of disappointing. No, there are no screenshots in this whole section. But yeah, yeah. they focus on the PC Engine, which didn't come out here. I'm, I was interested to see that 16-bit was a term in 1989. Like, that that yeah. was, like, a thing, like, oh, the next gen of, of systems is not going to be called next gen, it's not going to be called, like, the terms we knew, but it, everybody knew they were going to be 16-bit games. It used to be a big deal. Like, that's how you tracked, you know, we knew that... Yep. And then 32-bit was, bit. was just as big, and you know, yeah. obviously Nintendo 64 is named yeah. after 64-bit games, but I don't know. They Look also... Compatible with nothing. <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know. They just needed another thing for their info box there. So they start this whole 16-bit system section, but then it doesn't continue until page 62. So they had this dare to compare feature. You know where they learned that from? Newspapers. Which oh, just continued on. Yeah. yeah. This is when they were going to take two uh, recent games, and this is like a head-to-head, basically. Yeah. They were doing Tech Mobile. That's a good idea. John Elway's quarterback. And and it's I, a really long feature, and they yeah. grade each one on realism, graphics, sound, computer opponent, two-player mode, bells and whistles, final grade. Yeah, I mean, I agree with the, all of their assessments where it shows Tech Mobile being positive. Yeah, that was a good one. Remember <laughs> yeah. when John Elway was a thing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I it's like this a, game. A, a uh, Xeno, this is Xenophobe, yeah. Xenophobe. You can't ad. really get a good look at it here, but it's kind of a bummer. Arcade port. Yeah, and an arcade game has like three three characters that can play at once and mm-hmm. explore a spaceship. I remember playing this on NES when I was very young and being scared of it. Really? Yeah. So now this is awesome. Oh boy. Magic this is land. Taxan Video Diction. Just a, a total like. They, what, they say welcome to the first issue, but it's just a giant advertisement for Taxan games. Okay. Embedded within EGM. Can you, can you order them in the end? Yes. Well, you can sign up for their newsletter. But then oh, okay, the introduction is written by Ken Lobb, who is now at Microsoft. You're kidding me. Right? Oh, that's the same. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> he was product manager oh, at Paxson. Yeah. And uh, well, there's Mappy Land. That... See, it's in a mousetrap. Oh, you get it. cool. <laughs> I love it. Promotional imagery. What else we got here? This is the North Star. Here's that Mystery Quest screen okay. again. Yeah, I don't really know what Mystery Quest is. I don't remember the name Taxan. So, like, I thought Mappy Land was published by somebody else. I, this is really interesting to me. Yeah, off so the, it's just embedded off, in here. Off the subscribe. Yeah. It's like $2. Yeah, $2 for look at Look at the scores. Issues. The scores on them. Yeah, and these That's games nice. aren't even out. He says, I know it's hard, you know, to display scores before the game's released, but I'll share mine with you to give you an idea of what you'll have to beat. Thanks, Kid Love. <laughs> It's actually from him, too. That's and then crazy. here's a Taxan ad. Yep. Brutal. Really rad. Outrageous. <laughs> now Japan's hottest games are getting America's highest reviews. What, but where, what are these sources of these quotes? Who said these games are really rad? <laughs> <laughs> and this, I mean, these are interesting because a lot of these are Nintendo third-party ads, you know? I mean, like, the, you, Nintendo didn't pay attention to third-party games that much. You know, they wouldn't have let third parties, like, write, walk all over Nintendo Power. Yeah. Anyway, this is the reviews section, even though they don't, they don't label it reviews. Yeah, and then this, this is, is their review scale. It's either a direct hit or a Which near hit. Which we never considered when we were changing our review scale. We should have gone with the Battleship ratings. Yeah. Well, the reverse Battleship, because direct hit is good here. <laughs> right, right. 1943 was, was apparently really good on the NES. Yeah, that, that port was terrible. Racket Attack was a hit. Yeah. Ultima Exodus is a hit. Okay. Bubble Bobble, direct hit. I agree with yeah, that. Right? Yeah. Dun, 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 that's uh, a good screenshot for that. Bump too. and jump. Yeah, yeah yep. It's like an arcade game. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, what I bump and jump's an arcade game. Is a, I think that's Jalica that published that. And I, I forgot the original Ease was on Sega. This is Sega Master System. That was a hit. See, that's cool that they have the Master System stuff in here. I mean, Rust that, done. That was definitely an arcade. What game. a different level of game though that Ease was. It was like this in-depth crazy RPG. Oh yeah, you that know? was deep. Like, and then yeah, uh, and then speaking of deep RPGs, here's an ad for Fantasy, Fantasy Star. Star. Like, I didn't have a Master System, but I thought this Nor screenshot... did I see that ad. If I would, I would have been like, I, I s- want to be that babe. <laughs> I thought this tentacle in the desert looked so awesome. That does like, look oh, really cool. I want to play cool. this game. Yeah. You've, you remember seeing this? Yeah. I remember really? this ad, yeah. Wow. And then this guy, like, what, what's going on with him? Well, you know, he has a like, bra. The Grim Reaper's got a sword back here. Like, <laughs> yeah, that does look cool. It was just a cat. And, you know, they were so resistant to using Japanese-style art on yeah. these games and their advertisements. They didn't want people to know that they were... Japanese. Time Soldiers was a near hit. Do you see what's going on in the art, the uh, cartoon in this page? Mm. It's some nondescript robot with a flower coming out of his yeah. gun. They so yeah, this is the only place where they 
use any sort of original art. Yeah, it's great art though. Really, really fantastic. I, I'd like to get it framed. Yeah. Thunderblade. So just more ads. Uh, so now they're doing an Atari game 7800 game. I remember this one. Yeah, so I thought that was interesting because in the cover it says, we're covering Sega, Nintendo, and Atari. And it's like, really? You're covering Atari? And look how terrible the Atari games look. Yeah, I mean... They tried. Yeah. It's not, like, compared to, like, first-generation NES games, mm -hmm. first-wave NES games, it's not that bad. But I don't know, compared to ice hockey on the NES. Of course, yeah. So, and then here's Tetris. This is the Tengen uh, version of, of Tetris that is their game of the month. Yeah. You know, this version of Tetris is really cool for a couple reasons. One is that they have a co-op mode in it. Mm. <clears throat> and it's a giant Tetris trough, and both people, you can both just put in pieces in the bottom of it. That's nice. so smart. <clears throat> this is all about Tetris. The spinner. Yeah, what, what is that? What was that spinner? As soon as the... Yeah, it's this... Like the, I think this is like a... Compu these are Track computer... Trackball? Computer stuff. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's because we're getting into computer reviews. They've got F F-19 mm -hmm. Stealth Fighter up here. Which looks amazing. It's a direct hit. Zach yeah. McCracken. I love that they reviewed this game. This is like uh, from the uh, Maniac Mansion guys. Oh, okay. Uh, Monkey Island. Yeah, I was going to say it looks familiar. I've never played Zach McCracken. That was a uh, LucasArts game. Yeah, it looks fun. Oh. And then you start getting into um, these computer games. They just had such better graphics. Like, look at this. Yeah, that looks awesome. It's like photo real by this. Yeah, time. like I, th I was like, damn. Like, what? The, the characters are really big. I've noticed that everything's a direct hit too. So. Yeah, there. Everything is reviewed very favorably. They yeah. don't have any misses. Well, especially if there's an ad in the issue. Offshore warrior. That looks pretty good because it's about presumably warriors and boats. Yeah, can't really go wrong with that. And All now right, we continue we the 16-bit expose. Look at that PC Engine prototype thing. Talking about the slipstream awesome. here. No, no screenshots of any games, but here's the slipstream. They don't have the system. Yeah, so this is all 16-bit Intel. Yeah. Very cool. Couldn't couldn't spare any color on this feature. Now, did we know... Yeah, we knew about the Game Boy in 89, so... I have a little bit of a preview on that, but no games out yet. So they're talking about Nintendo 16-bit Super Famicom, mm -hmm. and then here they say... Uh, they're showing off a flight simulator. To Which would have it. been... And then, yeah, for some pilot wings. Pilot wings, yeah. And then a new Super Mario Adventure, Super Mario Brothers 4. Yeah. Because they didn't know it was called Super Mario World. I love that. Yeah, that's pretty great. It's essentially finished, but they had no reason to release it because the NES was still performing so well. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. That sounds like Nintendo. Yeah. And if that's what they're it. doing with Wii U games right now. They might as well not put out any Wii U games because it's performing so well. <laughs> Why does that Game Boy have those lines all over it? Has some kind of like art treatment to it to make it yeah, look well, they, futuristic yeah. and cool. They got this from like uh, some Nintendo like key art. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So it's are. supposed to. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> International scoreboard. Although I think they're all from America. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is from Tokyo. Afterburner. Hmm. I wish I could compete with these scores. November Kelly is is the the oh. Tokyo resident. I think we can track down November Kelly. Sounds real. Home games. Game over. So look, there's Zelda 2, though. Yeah. So which they up. didn't mention, and they're coming up. Zelda 2, Rampage, the and then issue. whatever this is. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like a PC kind of... They, yeah. It doesn't tell what, what any of the games are, huh? Hmm. I like how they're going to do a CES preview, though, because CES was actually a, you know, the only game conference at the time. Yeah. Badass. That was cool. That there was the back cover ad? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, so yeah, that's either the first or second issue of Electronic Gaming Monthly, which was, I think, had been known as Electronic Game Player before it turned into this. Yeah, episode. we were trying to do some research into that, but yeah. came up inconclusive. Yeah. Uh, yeah, lots of good stuff in there. Thanks for joining us again. Thanks for joining me, Sam. Yeah, let's read. Yeah, viewers, uh, let us know what other uh, retro gaming magazines you want to see on the Let's Read series, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Yeah.